Hi, I'm Andrew from Stuart Gems and welcome back to another faceting video. Have you ever wondered how a gem like this becomes this? Well stick around to find out. First I examined the piece of morganite for any cracks or inclusions that will need to be removed in the preforming stage. now is just grinding the flat surface on the top of the stone where I'm going to glue the dot. You can see there's just a little crack here running through the stone which I'm going to have to remove. Not sure how deep it goes yet but I'm going to cut away for a while and see what happens. runs deeper than I hoped it did so I'm gonna have to cut away quite a bit of the stone here to get a clean piece of material to work with. I'm just start to preform a bit now after cutting the table. I'm doing here is removing the parts of the stone that can't be used. They're too chipped or jagged or too thin. So I'm reducing the stone down to a workable piece of stone and then I'll decide what shape I'm gonna cut this. I've now finished the preform and I'm going to facet this in a modified round brilliant design. I'm going to use a traditional dopping technique here. So what I'm doing is heating the stone and the brass dop stick and I'm going to use a shellac base wax to bond the stone to the dop. I'm using indirect heat to heat the morganite and this way um, avoiding any risk of causing damage to it by thermal shock. As I heat the wax I'm taking care not to put too much of the flame directly on it. I don't want it to catch fire as this will burn off some of the shellac and make it more brittle and there's a greater chance that the bond would between the dop and the stone would break. It's very important that the stone and the wax are at the right temperature. If the wax is too cold, it won't hold the stone securely. Just about the worst thing that can happen to a faceter is when he's cutting a stone that it would fall off the dop. This can happen for lots of different reasons but um, it can absolutely destroy hours of work. now time to start cutting the stone. The first thing I'm going to do is round out the girdle. Morganite is a member of the beryl gemstone family. Other gemstones in the beryl family include aquamarine and emerald.
I'm starting to cut the pavilion facets. This is the most important part of the cutting process. The first row of pavilion facets is used to build the rest of the design from. Any mistake here will cause errors in later stages of cutting. Here you can see where there's a chip in the stone and this is where I haven't cut deep enough in the preforming stage. This will be cut out when I cut the girdle facets. Now we have the outline of the stone. It's now time to start cutting all the rest of the pavilion facets. The process of cutting a facet involves cutting a little bit then checking with the loop and then cutting a little bit more. As you can see in the center of the stone, the facet I'm cutting now will slowly extend as the depth of the cut deepens. I want to stop exactly when the facet I'm cutting meets the girdle. If I go past this point, I'll have to recut all of the other pavilion facets to correct the error. After finishing cutting the pavilion facets, I pre-polish all of the facets I've cut so far. This will remove any of the heavy scratches left over and you can start to see the stone become a little bit more transparent. Next I polish the pavilion facets. For this I use a 50,000 grit diamond paste. Now I transfer the stone to a new dop. I'm using super glue in this case, and I'll remove the old dop and continue cutting the crown. After transferring the gemstone to a new dop, there's always some risk of misalignment. Here I'm using a piece of machined aluminium to check against the girdle facet and ensure that there's perfect alignment. It's at this stage I polish the girdle facets. I can make fine adjustments on the faceting machine to ensure I have perfect alignment. The top part of the gemstone is called the crown. 
I used the same technique to cut the crown as the pavilion. With the cutting of the crown now complete, all that's left to do is to polish it. If you've enjoyed this video and want to see more, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and hope to see you for the next facet and video.